Well, bless the Lord, brothers and sisters. So happy to be back yet again. I thank God for you tuning in. This is a message that I hope that you listen to twice or maybe three times. This is a message that I hope that you actually share because it's very important because even children of God are being seduced by familiar spirits. They're being seduced by demonic spirits. They're being seduced by people who pretend to be family members, to be co-workers, to be church members even that are doing them injustices, spiritual injustices that can have a detrimental effect uh, on their soul. I made a video in the past concerning astral projection. I even made a video in the past, if you look back, talking about familiar spirits. But today, as I woke up, Something prompted me to make this video because I think I had someone comment on uh, breaking the silver cords. I made a video about ley lines. You can look that up as well. A very informative video. It's a globe, I believe. The thumbnail is a globe. And it talks about silver cords and ley lines and such. And these are spiritual terms, which basically... Uh, has to do with the infiltration of different demonic spirits going from one generation or region to another in order to infiltrate in your life uh, in a bad way. So, like I said, the reason why I'm making this video is because somebody commented on how they can get rid of uh, that connection uh, in the spiritual realm. Uh, and I think it had to do with astral projection as well so that they won't astral project. So I'm kind of if you would, bringing that information in this video, along with another refresher on renouncing and cutting off the spirits of the night, seduction spirits, incubus, particularly, and succubus spirits. So this video, yes, it's going to be chock full of information. Like I said, take your time, listen to it twice or thrice if you'd like, and share it. Because a lot of people out there are just going along to get along and wonder why spiritually they're at a state where they're enslaved by the devil. So let's talk first of all about the dream state and astral projection and such. There's a lot of people out there. I just actually saw a video about uh, someone who said astral projection is actually a good thing. You know, that it's nothing wrong with it. Don't be scared that even if you see demonic spirits as you are in a state of sleep paralysis, and I've had sleep paralysis before, and brothers and sisters, there's nothing pretty about it. Uh, the devil will try to manipulate your mind to think that's a pretty thing, and you're getting closer to a different realm and such, and you're able to you know, leave your body and do this and that, but I'm telling you the truth. When you mess with the spiritual realm, it is literally something that you're not familiar with. We live in a physical realm, right? And we are spiritual beings, right? But if you live 90% of your life, right, in a physical realm, meaning you do your day-to-day, -day, you see people, you see humans in the physical flesh, when you leave your body and astral project and go to the spiritual realm, when you're not spiritually, uh, you know, equipped, first of all, on God's side, the devil has total access to wreck and wreak havoc in your life. There's nothing positive about doing that because God didn't want you to ask or project. And if God didn't want you to do something, who does want you to do it? The devil, right? And the reason why the devil literally wants to separate your consciousness or your spirit or whatever the case is from your physical body and from your physical well-being and consciousness and such. The reason why he wants to separate the two is because the devil literally is in the spiritual realm. I'm going to say it again. The devil is and resides in the spiritual realm. However, he has a certain amount of jurisdiction in the physical realm. As you know, he is wreaking havoc in this world, okay? And God allows a degree 
of things that he does to go on. God knows that in a drop of a hat, sort of speak, if he wanted to eliminate and obliterate the devil, he could. All right. He's not. Listen, the devil is not a threat. Okay. To God, you know, the devil is no big deal. In other words, all right. God is more powerful, as you know, than the devil. However, in terms of the devil in us, the devil has a lot of power over us, particularly when we are working for the devil and with the devil. But when God lives and resides in us, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So obviously, we do have power through Christ, not on our own omission or permission, but through Christ, we have power. However, when people are dabbling in the occult, particularly, automatically, hear me, that power, an anointing from on high from God is relinquished. Because now, hear me, you're getting a counterfeit power and a counterfeit anointing from an enemy, your enemy, right? So the devil obviously watches us. He watches what we like. He watches what we look at. He is, in so many ways, a bad big brother. (laughs) A bad big brother meaning he has spiritual satellites and sees what a lot of us do. And based on our, you know, appetite, he tries to facilitate that. Even when we try to go to sleep and think that we are counting sheep, some of us want to leave, literally leave this stratosphere. And when we have an urge or an appetite or an attraction to things that are above our, you know, jurisdiction spiritually, He wants to also facilitate that. So, brothers and sisters, all you guys and girls out there who has ever astral projected or wanted to give it a try, I'm telling you right now, you've entered the occult. You've entered the occult. Anytime that you want to literally go in a different atmosphere and travel from this place to this place, the devil is going to try to make it seem like a wonderful thing. I heard the guy talking about, you know, you could travel from this place to this place and you're supposed to do it because you're the kings of this world. And if you don't have that opportunity to do that, then you're nothing. You're nobody. Like, look at the devil. Come on. If you want to travel, you save your money. You book a ticket and you get on a plane or you drive to the place. That's how you travel, brothers and sisters. You don't need to travel during the night in your dreams to France in 0.2 seconds because I'm telling you, listen, the devil will give you his France and that France is a different France that you've ever seen. And yeah, it may look like the France that you see on TV, but the devil, hear me very clearly, is a liar. And once you get into that realm, once you travel out of your body, Satan has the opportunity to literally kill you when you're in that realm and separate you from your flesh. How about that? Did you learn about that from those witches and warlocks? The fact that you can actually die separated from your body In that realm as well, you think this is all a joke. You think, you know, nothing's going to happen to you when you are in Satan's domain. Brothers and sisters, Satan hates humans. He's not your friend. He's not going to take you on a world tour over the world and, oh, I'll show you this, I'll show you that. Didn't, Didn't Satan say that to Jesus Christ? I'll show you this and I'll show you that. Why? Because he had the opportunity to do so. God gave him that jurisdiction to do certain things. It's not a fluke. However, it comes with a prize. 
It comes with the price. Just like a lot of people talking about different uh, things that you can take. What is it called? Psychogenics? What is that? I forgot the name of it. Drugs. Drugs. I forgot the name of it. It escapes me right now. I don't it start I think it's with a P. Where people, you know, PCP and such, where they really get high and they start seeing stuff. DHP, something is it's, it's a drug where allegedly it's the um it's a, it's 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 a I think it's a body part it's it's a it's a liquid of a toad and then you they 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 grind it down and put it in a powder it's a pus yeah it's the pus of a toad and they grind it down and allegedly you're gonna see <laughs> your ancestors and you're gonna see like different out of this world stuff right psychogenics or whatever what is that it starts with a p anyway. It basically, you know, you guys know what I'm talking about, but it basically makes you hallucinate and see a lot of things and travel to different things. It's the same thing. It's the same concept of getting out of your right mind. That's what Satan wants you to do. Be vulnerable and get out of your right mind. Psychedelics. Come on, somebody. That's the name of it. Psychedelics. Psychedelics. They used to take it. Back in the days that the flower, the flower girl times, you know, and they used to take it. And now it's become popular where people are literally, you know, going there because they're tired of the status quo. They want to get out of here. They want to escape. But the bottom line is once you take these drugs, you think you're seeing, you know, enlightened things and it tells you about yourself. Listen, you want to learn about yourself. You want to be humbled. Read the word of God. Start there. Start in the book of Proverbs. It, it'll humble you up really good. It'll give you some good wisdom. It'll give you some good wisdom about yourself. Read the book of Proverbs and stay there for like a week and read it over and over again. You, you'll straighten up and fry right. You would. But no, you want psychedelics and you want drugs and you want this and that. And a lot of people, a lot of you out there. You can't escape reality. You got to face it head on. Good, bad, or indifferent. You don't think I go through things? I go through things. But I got to deal with it. Soberly. Soberly. That's the hardest thing in life. The hardest thing is to live sober. It's full throttle. No holds bar. So, getting back to what I'm talking about. And yes, you could tell in my tone I'm a little vexed and perplexed. Because there's a lot of people out there that are literally getting sucked in by the devil. Oh yeah, I'm going to get to soul ties and incubus and succubus as well. But I want to stay a little bit on the astral projection, astral plane, mumbo jumbo. And I'm not saying mumbo jumbo to the fact that it's not real. I'm saying mumbo jumbo to the fact that there's literally people out there that's thinking that astral projection and leaving your body and going to a different spiritual realm is a good thing. It's not. It's not. It's nothing good about it. And the reason being is just like going to a club at first, right? A nightclub. The, de- the devil's there. The devil's people are in clubs and bars and strip clubs. And this is what's going to happen. Initially, you go to the first time. Nothing's going to happen. You're going to have the great time of your life. And that's exactly what Satan wants. You take that drink. Nothing's going to happen. It's going to feel great. That's what Satan wants. But then the third and the fourth and the fifth and the sixth time... He's got you. Hook, line, and sinker. Right? Oh, this wasn't that bad. What are they talking about? That's exactly why Satan wants, he wants you to be docile. He wants you to be, you know, uh, you know, unaware, naive. Like, you know, I, I, I'm invincible. It can't, it can't affect me. Some people are taking drugs. Yeah, it, it can't affect me like it affected you. It, it had no effect. Do you think it's by happenstance that because this person takes crack and the first time they don't get addicted and this person takes crack and the first time they hook, line, sink, addicted? Satan wanted you not to feel addicted so that you could come back and come back and come back until you do get addicted. 
Sometimes it's Satan's strategy, brethren, to make you feel you could get away with stuff. Huh? Prime example, you go to Walmart and, and, and listen, it's a kleptomaniac dream now. These stores are going to be designed to make a kleptomaniac feel like they're a cookie in a candy store without the, without the uh, cops around, right? You go to a local Walmart and there's hardly no workers there. So you feel like you could take stuff and go, right? But God's watching. And there may be un undercover cops watching. And then when you go home with a bag of tricks and whatever you took, your conscience is there. And it's a, con it's a constant reminder of what you've done wrong. That guilt is going to eat at you. So you're not going to escape, brothers and sisters. You're not going to escape. So I'm here to sober you up. That's what I like to do. I like to sober people up. And I know it's hard. I know, I know people don't like to hear the hard videos. Uh huh. But your soul is at stake. Huh? I said your soul is at stake. And it's high time for God's people to, to, to wake up. Real talk. This astral projection crap and all of this other stuff that the devil on the silver screen on TV is trying to make you feel that it's, it's okay. It's not okay. That's why little Johnny that lives with you and little Susie are having bad nightmares. And you, a lot of you don't even know what to do. You don't even know how to deliver your children. You don't even know how to pray over your children. You don't even know the who, what's, and where's, why's, and what they're watching during the day. Why? Because you're chasing the bag, a lot of you, and you feel that the bag that you're chasing, you have to pacify them with buying more and more and more for them, right? And the more you buy for them, the more they shut up and not complain about your absenteeism. Can, can I get it raw? Is it okay? I'm going there. Okay, so we talked about astral projection, and, and I want to talk now about how to get out of that situation. Cut the allure. Cut the attraction. Just cut it out of your life altogether. How do you do it? Well, first of all, you have to recognize that it's a bad thing. <laughs> Even though you had a good experience. Let's just, let's just say you had a good astral situation. Or experience. You heard about it through a friend, quote unquote. You heard about it on YouTube, or you heard about it and you decided to give it a try. Or a drug that you took. You know, you heard about this and this, and you decided to give it a try. Brothers and sisters, I was looking at something that Mike Tyson, because a lot of you out there know that I enjoy boxing. I do. I have to confess the truth. <laughs> um, I like just boxing. I, I think that the sport is more than physical. I think the boxing sport is more mental. It's more mental than physical. And I don't look at it just for the, you know, the, the slapping of skin and pounding and such. Even though, you know, Growing up in Brooklyn, New York, I had my share of fights. Some I lost, some I won. So I understand the importance of physical combat. And brothers and sisters out there, you have to know about spiritual warfare and fighting as well. I don't care if you're the prissiest of prissy and love the Lord and, and, and you know, you don't believe in fighting or touching a fly or harming a, a, a goat, whatever the case is. Listen, you got to fight, brethren. You got to fight. You got to fight just about every day. Newsflash, you got to fight just about every single day. Every single day that you're on this planet, you got to fight to get up, especially when you're 50. <laughs> And now that I've turned 50, I realize that is the reality. Every day you got to fight to get up. Every day you got to fight to pray. Sometimes you just got to fight to decide to, you know, push and go to work when you don't want to go to work. You got to fight each and every day. Sometimes you got to fight the urge to sin. Sometimes you got to fight the urge to do things that the flesh wants, but your soul does not. Sometimes you got to fight 
just to be nice to people who you know is of the devil. Sometimes you got to fight to pray for your enemy. Sometimes you got to fight to do this and to do that. You got to fight the devil who's on your heels every day that's telling you to try this drug and that drug to satisfy this urge. Sometimes you got to fight brothers and sisters to be on a straight and narrow. And also you have to fight the demons that are trying to ravage your soul. So getting back to boxing, I don't know why I talked about that, but talked about boxing and how it's more of a mental thing. And you got to realize, brothers and sisters, that in this spiritual war, you have to know that you are a soldier, that you have been equipped with all the spiritual tools that you need. You just have to put them on. You have to be aware of them and you have to exercise them. Don't just put it on for a day and, you know, you got your... Would you go outside with a dress on and no shoes? Would you go outside with a suit on and no shoes? Would you go outside on a rainy day? Hear me. With a, a, a shorts on or a bathing suit. No, you will dress appropriately, right? So in this spiritual battle, right, you have to have the full armor on, not just for one day. And that's the misconception. A lot of people are stumbling, mumbling, and bumbling because they are putting on the armor just when they feel that the battle is on, when the heat is on, all right, I'm going to put it on. The devil's on my toes. The devil's trying to, you know, put me in the, you know, washing machine. I got to put my armor on. No, you put your armor on when ain't nothing going on. Huh? I said, you put your armor on when there's nothing going on because those silent moments, those moments in your life when everything seems to be going okay, that's exactly the time when the devil wants you to think and feel that he's not on your toes. He's on your toes 24-7. He doesn't sleep. Newsflash. But God doesn't sleep either. And God doesn't slumber. So the more you work your soul salvation out each and every day. And decide to be on God's side in spirit and in truth, God will equip you. God will tell you what's coming on the other side before it comes. He will give you that spirit of discernment and he will help you each and every way. So yes, yeah, so I had a uh, you know person who commented about how they get free and I told them about renouncing that allegiance that you had in that spiritual realm. I told them about deliverance. And I also told them about repentance. Not a lot of people realize the power of repentance. Sometimes we're just ignorant and we do things and we feel things and we say things that we don't realize the spiritual, you know, onslaught that's on its way because of it. So now I want to talk about, brothers and sisters, the other thing. We already know that, you know, astral projection is of the devil. We already know that the devil wants to literally separate you from yourself to make you even more vulnerable. And how he does it is he takes you to different places because he's already in the spiritual realm, right? And he allows you to see things that are fascinating. And if you have the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh and the pride of life, you obviously are a good target for him. Right. But if you're armored up, you know, and if you're battle ready, you realize and you see what's what. So now I want to talk about the incubus and succubus spirits who also sometimes have legal jurisdiction to wreak havoc in your life by you, by your own sins and omissions. Oh, I'm going to step on some toes right now. Oh, I'm going to expose the devil because he needs to be exposed. Listen up. Listen up. Brothers and sisters, when you do not have the whole armor of God on, 
And when you are not praying and when you are not seeking God's face, you're doing the opposite. Okay. It's either you're on God's side or you're on the devil's side. There's no three ways about it. Okay. So rewind the tape. Think about what you've been watching. Think about what you've been giving your attention to. And I'm telling you, social media is notorious for trying to literally get you off your game, so to speak. It tries to distract you with coonery buffoonery and entertainment and fascination. So once you are distracted and once your spiritual senses of power on high is diminished, here comes the lust of the flesh. And how many of you out there know that we are attracted to attractive things? I'm going to say it again. We are attracted to attractive things, right? Whether it be a car, whether it be a house, whether it be a person with a great shape and a nice pretty face or a handsome guy or you know a celebrity crush, whatever it is, Satan will set the stage for you. And in setting that stage for you, because he knows, you know, what you like, right? He remembers back in the days what you used to look at and fantasize. He has a blueprint of your life in a certain way, right? So he pulls up your files, so to speak. And in your dream, in your dream, you could, listen, you could be a straight person, right? Right? heterosexual, and the devil (laughs) will literally be so lascivious and perverted that he's going to put the opposite sex in your dream to make you feel that this is a good thing that you should try. Give it a try. Everybody's doing it. Look at the commercials. Come on, give it a try. Listen, It's only kinky at first. I remember I saw a guy with a t-shirt in a store. And I honestly think, hear me, that that was a setup of the devil. For me, it was a setup of the devil. Listen, I like nice looking things too. Come on. And this guy was very attractive. Very attractive. Looks like he came off of, uh, you know, a magazine. Model type, right? And I looked at his face, looked at his body. I mean, I'm telling you, the the, the devil just like set the stage, y'all. And I tried to look away, you know. And as I was looking away, I looked at his T-shirt. And his T-shirt said, hear me, true story. It's only kinky at first. Lord have mercy. This is how the devil plays, brothers and sisters. And if you are at a vulnerable spiritual state where you're not armored up or your, your, your mind and your soul and your spirit is not on things of God, that temptation is going to knock on your door. Huh? So I'm going through the aisles with my groceries. I looked away, but that image of him and that t-shirt reign supreme in my psyche. And you don't think it could happen to you? So, of course, the flesh was fantasizing. At first, I thought it was very disrespectful. Crash. Oh, oh, is that a word? Okay, I'm going to say a different word. I thought it was rude. I thought it was shrewd. I thought it was obnoxious and, 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 and all of those prudish words. But then... A couple of seconds later down the aisle, I thought, I, I thought that was sexy. I thought it turned me on, in fact. Can I get raw with y'all? Can I get real? And then, I, and then I thought, wait a minute. This is a trick. He's too good looking to be straight. Maybe he was on the other side, the other team, playing with the other team. All these things were trying to process in my head. Reality struck, and then I realized eventually that that was the devil. And you know what? Honestly speaking, I was in both worlds. 
I didn't do that good. I didn't pass the test. Because the lust of my eyes and the lust of the flesh and the pride of life got me. Listen, listen. You see, you see, you think this is a game. You, you think this is a game. You think this is a game. Listen. If you are not armored up, you're gonna get sucked in. How about that? Is that raw enough for you? The exorcist. I'm gonna get to the incubus and succubus. I, I, I'm just going somewhere. I'm laying foundation. Do you know why the lady, the, the, the girl in the exorcist movie years ago, the original exorcist, that crazy demonic movie, do you know why though, if you saw it, the reason why the little girl that was possessed of the devil, right? You know why she was laughing at the priest in the movie? The priest got slung around, she slung him around and she laughed at him or whatever. The priest thought he was doing, the, you know, he, he was chanting, you know, all of these, you know, Catholic crap to her, you know, that was supposed to do some damage. The reason why it didn't work is because the priest was a drunk in the movie. Newsflash. The priest was a drunk. He was an alcoholic. And a lot of these priests are, believe it or not, along with um, pedof pedophiles, you know, but that's another, you know, that's another. Allegedly. Let me, let me say that. Allegedly. Because, you know, my channel, I don't want to get striked. <sighs> I'm going somewhere. The reason why... It didn't work with the demon girl <clears throat> is because the priest had no power. He was powerless because he's working with Satan. How can a demon cast out another demon? If you are literally into sorcery and that's what drugs are, hear me, that's what drugs, getting high, leaving your body, all of that stuff, that is what it is. It's working with Satan. Alcohol is sorcery. Did you not know that? Drugs are sorcery. It's a form of sorcery. So if he was getting high, right? Drinking alcohol and literally trying to cast out demons, that's an oxymoron, right? So it didn't work. She was laughing at him. She slung him, you know, against the wall. I say this to say, if you are doing things during the day or watching things during the day, that are literally contrary to what you need to do in God, the demons are laughing at you. Hence, incubus and succubus. Oh, we're going to go there. I hope this video doesn't cut off. I know my time is getting away from me. I made a video about incubus and succubus. I'm going to wrap it up with this. It's real. The spiritual realm, brother and sisters, is real. And if you're having a lot of sexual dreams... And if you're having dreams that even are, are, are gay dreams, meaning that you see, uh, you know, man on man, lady on lady, you, 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 you're going through rooms and, you know, people are tossing a spaghetti or, or tossing a sausage, whatever the case is, it's sick, it's perverted, it's out there, it's nuts. The devil wants you to join that party, folks. Huh? I don't care if you're straight or not. The devil wants you to join the party. And if you join that party once, he has, hear me. Legal jurisdiction, legal jurisdiction to, er, to, to try that, you know, fantasy again. He won't do it again the next night, the next night. It could be years down the, the line to the fact that you, you question your own sexuality. Brothers and sisters, this is serious. You need to renounce the incubus and the succubus demons. These demons look human. But if you pull over the curtain, you realize they are ugly gargoyles that have teeth that will shred you to pieces. And you, you laying up having sex with them because they look like Beyonce with the, you know, pretty this and the pretty that and the big butt and whatever the case is. They look like your crush. They look like your celebrity, but piece by piece, they're shredding your soul to pieces and they're forming covenants. And some of you have spiritual children. And some of you are spiritually bound to these through spiritual marriages. Brothers and sisters, this is deep stuff. Satan's not playing. 
He wants you to be a part of his family. Newsflash. And the more you think this is cute, and the more you stop watching his stuff and laying down with his people, swipe there, swipe there, and the devil's swiping your soul away. You don't know who these people are. You don't know who these scammers are. But they look good, and they look kind of normal, and they working for Satan himself. You have no spirit of discernment because you're walking in the lust of the flesh. I'm going to say it again. Pause there. Pause there. You have no spirit of discernment because you're walking in a lustful, lascivious vein. That's why you swipe, swipe and left and swipe and right and getting all the, uh, the devil's uh, <laughs> cronies. All the devil's goons kissing at you and telling you sweet nothings. <laughs> Literally, sweet nothings. There's nothing sweet about hell, brethren. There's nothing sweet about being used and deceived and abused. Nothing sweet about it. People are laying in the alley or homeless or, or, or in a rubber room, huh? Out of their minds because they got caught laying with the devil's people, huh? And they thought they was the life of the party. And they thought they could stay a little bit longer. And they thought that they could talk to this witch that was uh, Ray Ray's cousins, aunts, uncles, you know, uh, you know, grandmother. And if they could only get a, lo a love potion of this, their life could change. And now they're in a crazy farm. Huh? Talking about uba duba duba do. Huh? You think this is a joke? Brothers and sisters, this is real. Raw and in your face. You need to renounce the fact that years ago in a romper room, you was playing with that Ouija board that that teacher and gave you and told you and seduced you because you had a witch for a teacher. She told you that that Ouija board was a game, just a game. And your soul is all entrapped in the devil's world. Little Johnny playing with dungeons and dragons and things in his dark room as a kid and his soul is still not free. As an adult, his soul is still not free. Listen, we got chains on us from adolescence because our parents decided to make the decision to watch this and try this and expose us to this and that. And we're still not free from adolescent soul ties and curses and generational things that we need to be free from. And now our children's 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 huh, are going through madness, if you had notice around the world. And now all you want to do is escape. And now all you want to do is just get a little drink, a little this and a little that, just to get out of your own head. There's no escape if you're in God. If you're in God, you want to stay and remain there. Because he will give you peace. He will give you joy. He will give you clarity. God Almighty, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob will give you a sober mind. Why would you want to go to a fake, fictitious, satanic realm under the sea or in the air when heaven awaits, the true heaven awaits? Why would you want to waste your time with a satanic, demonic counterfeit? Ask yourself that. And ask yourself who and what is prompting you huh, to have these experiences. Where's the genesis behind it? Who introduced you to astral projection? Think about it. If you ever got seduced or introduced, oh man, that rhymes, with astral projection, ask yourself, what state was you in? Not a physical state as far as New Hampshire and Rhode Island. What state of mind were you in spiritually? You had to be on a low point. Because usually, hear me, hear me, just like a lot of people that go to uh, seances or they go to uh, psychics and such, right? It's something in your life that's going the wrong direction and you're looking for advice, quick fixes and such. So usually when you're at a low point spiritually, you're not looking for God. You're looking for a quick fix. 
And that's the problem. You don't want to do the work spiritually. You don't want to work on yourself. You just want to dull the pain. You want to suffocate the hurt. Brothers and sisters, you have to be sober in the spiritual war. You have to be sober. Because the more you are sober, the more you can see people and things and situations from truly what they are. And when you relinquish the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, when you give that up and put on the full armor of God and decide to make the decision to follow Christ, he'll give you the insight and the power on high to win. There's no shortcuts. There's no quick ways with God. You just do it his way or the hell way. It's the truth. It's the truth. The devil likes to sneak. The devil likes to creep. The devil likes to cheat. The devil likes to do things like that. That's why there's so many cheaters in the world. So many scams going rampant. Because a lot of people have subscribed to the get rich quick, the do it quick, let's let's, let's just get this done, as opposed to literally putting in the work, right? Right? And as you know, as a boxer, you know, people who are in that field of boxing, whether they are spiritually with God or not, there's a fasting of the physical that they have to go through, right? Not only the physical, you know, workouts and the training physically, but they literally have to sacrifice sexually, right? And you say, why sexually, right? What was the big deal? Why can't they just have sex? Well, before the fight, brothers and sisters, when they go to the training of fighting, they can't have sex. Because sex is a powerful spiritual thing that not a lot of people know it's spiritual, right? And in order to be on their best and highest form a focus in the ring, they have to sacrifice their sexual appetite in order to stay focused because sex literally, they say they, it weakens the knees. That's why after you are having sex with someone, especially men, they know that they feel weak. They feel weak afterwards, right? But it's spiritual also. It makes a person vulnerable. That's why it's very important to know that when you lay down with that person, that that person is God picked, that that person is your wife, that person is your husband by God, right? Chosen to literally be with you. And when you lay down brothers and sisters with so many different spirits and so many different physical uh, people, right? If they are not of God, you are literally intertwining with a lot of spirits that you don't want in your life, right? That's why the devil wants people to be promiscuous, right? Because the more, right, you are entangled literally with different spirits and different people, what happens is you lose your spiritual sense of identity. And you, in turn, being that sex is a spiritual thing, you, in turn, right, intertwine with their demons and their spirits and such and their beliefs. That's why you think back in the days, and I'm going to get somewhere with this video, right? King Solomon, he went to wisdom, but obviously he was very rich and such. But King Solomon had a lot of wives, right? We know that. King Solomon had many, many wives and many, many concubines. Do you really think that all of those women were of God and had God on their mind? No, they worshiped other God. They worshiped idols. They worshiped the devil, a lot of them. But they were pretty. (laughs) But they had great bodies, (laughs) right? So all of those demonic spirits that was in them, those gods that they worshiped, had an effect 
on King Solomon. A negative effect, right? And I know back in the days it was okay to have more than one wife. And that's what they did back in the days, right? But it came with a price, especially if he chose the wrong one. Out of the lust of his eyes and the lust of his flesh and the pride of life. Just because you have opportunity or financial means to support and take care of stuff, it doesn't mean that everything and everyone is for you. Okay? So let's get back and tie up the incubus and succubus, and then I'm, I'm about done with this video again. I hope you got something out of this. The goal is not to be tricked, not to be bamboozled. The totality of this video is stop acting ignorant and stop being tricked by the devil. And the way that we do this, the way that we do this is to stop compromising, right? With the things of the world. If the world is attractive and you find it attractive, you're going to partake in the things of the world, period, right? If you shun the world and say, no, I know this is a trick. I know this is a trap. You know, I got myself in check. I repented and I abstained spiritually of this and this and that. Then the devil ain't going to mess with you. He'll try. But he know he ain't getting far with you because you're covered by the blood of Jesus Christ and you're armored up, right? And you have a made up sober mind. But there's some out there that say that they love God. But that ain't, that ain't all of it. You can love God and still <laughs> do the devil's business too. That priest that was in the exorcist, I'm sure he loved God. But he also loved the liquor, huh? And what happened? He got swung around by a little girl uh, that was possessed of the devil. A little girl that had all hell in her. And all the power of darkness then slung his body to the room. The reason why he didn't have no power is because he didn't deal with the demons within himself. You can't cast out demons with demons in you. Listen, we need to be powerful, brethren. All this astral projection and all of this incubus and succubus dreams. and You need to watch what you're watching. You need to make a decision to serve God in spirit and in truth. A lot of you people out there are literally unsober. You're drunk. You're drunk from the world. You're seduced and wonder why you haven't night terrors and wonder why you can't help little Johnny and little Susie with their night terrors and, and such. Huh? Because you didn't make a decision. It's all about making a decision, right? And if it could happen to the best of us, if we could find ourselves slipping and dipping and not repenting. See, the thing is, I didn't have to tell you about the supermarket thing at all. I told you about the supermarket t-shirt test because I'm trying to tell you that even as a woman of God, I could be seduced from my past old lusts too. You know what that made me think about? You know what that, you know what that uh, t-shirt after I thought about it, made me think about the time when I was uh, 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 in my Prince days, the no hold, holes bars Prince days. And it was lust, 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 Prince, 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 lust, lust, lust. Everything goes. Everything goes. Incubus, Sunkabus City, erotic city, all that. So if you have a history, hear me, I'm closing. If you have a history, right? that has not been renounced in spirit and in truth for real, and you still have remnants of that lustful desire in you, and you have not renounced and cast it down to the pit of hell, it could try to revisit, brethren. It could try to revisit. And we all are tested. And we can be tested in the most, in, in the most unobvious, unassuming places. In a supermarket, in a doctor's office, you see a pretty girl or whatever the case is that was literally assigned by the devil to test you. Huh? You could be in a funeral home. 
trying to, you know, <laughs> trying to buy a casket for somebody. And all of a sudden the worker in there is, try, is, is, is assigned by the devil to test you there. We are being tested every day. We are being tested in our dreams. We are being tested in the natural. You could be tested in your dreams to try to sin, to try to see what you're going to do. Everything is a test. But you can say no in your dreams too. You can renounce the devil and say, devil, I see you in your dreams too. And I'm not going to fall for it. You got to exercise your power, brethren. This is real. This is real. This video was important because there's a lot of people out there that's, that are still having incubus and succubus sexual dreams. And they needed to hear this. This is a refresher. This is a refresher. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you renounce it and be sober and spirited in truth and take this video for real and start getting serious about your spiritual walk. In Jesus name I pray. Amen and amen.